Yes. Anthony, is Jesse? that you at 503? Yes, Jesse, Hello. this is Anthony Patch. Thank you for having me well, on today. Well, thank you for being on, Anthony. I We haven't talked before. I, I've watched some of your videos and, and saw some of your information there, and it's so interesting. I was glad that you contacted us and, and came on today. Well, thank you, and I do apologize if I'm not able to hear you clearly. I think you're aware that there is some interference coming through, but we'll do the best we can. Okay, uh, let me do some slight adjustments. I've been waiting with some new equipment, and it has not gotten here yet, and uh, that's just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> but I'm trying to, uh, is it breaking up on you? Is that what you're getting? Yes, sir, but it, it comes and goes. Uh, is that any better? About the same. About the same. Well, I'm just. I'm going to try. I'll try to stay right in this in this microphone. But uh, oh, ready. You, listen, uh, Anthony. I, I want to listen to what you've got to say. I, I want you to tell us a lot about what is what you think is going on. And I'm so interested in what you were talking about with this advanced like technology, some of those things, and just kind of. Give us a give. Tell us something about your book and how we can get it, if you if you don't mind. Sure. No, I appreciate that. Um, the book is available um, on Amazon, also on Kindle, print or download. Um, again, it's covert catastrophe. And really, I'd like to step back just a moment to your previous caller. Um, I think what he said is completely valid, and I'm right in step with what he said as well as your responses. Um, I'd like to start with a solution. We're going to delve into a, a number of scientific areas here, but I really think you hit on the most important part, and that is our relationship with uh, Christ and turning ourselves to him, turning our lives over to him, because a lot of this material can be very depressing to people, and I'd really like to start out with the solution and the hope and the promise that comes from our Lord and Savior first, and that right. really we are, you know, a part of his plan, and all of what we're seeing that we tend to think is a negative problem, um, you know, disasters, etc., it's all part of God's plan. It's part of waking people up and getting them to turn to him before the final judgment comes. Right, Anthony, it's right. And, you know, if it was just natural disasters, that's one thing, but when you start talking about, you know, the soup stern and uh, dimensional openings and things like that, that's something that we got to have help with because we, we can't handle that as just independent citizens or individuals. We've got higher powers on this earth that are evil and they're trying to bring about things that that only he can stop or only he very, can get us through. That is very true. And if we focus on the science for a moment, you were speaking on Friday and today about the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC in CERN, Switzerland, and that's really where the genesis, if you will, started with my research uh, for my book. Um, this is what piqued my attention and made, made me start on the uh, what I call the research into rabbit holes. Um, the, the statue in front of the LHC, I'm totally there with you. That's what piqued my interest and made me say, what is the philosophical reason? Why are they associating a scientific instrument with essentially a Hindu idol god known as, you know, the uh, the destroyer is the short version of it. Did you want to build upon or comment on that? Well, listen, uh, that's exactly what caught my attention. And when I started, I I looked into the information and I had studied some string theory a few years ago, I think when they were first talking about these super colliders. But then mm -hmm. when I saw that, when I saw the statue of Shiva, I have studied some of the Hindu and the Vedic literatures and the Bhagavad Gita back during college and world religion and, and different things like that. And mm -hmm. it's not just the destroyer that caught my attention, but the dance between dimensions <clears throat> that it signifies that Shiva, has, you know, has that celestial dance between dimensions is almost in some of the Vedic literature, and it seems that's what they're trying to do. 
is the, this dimensional mm-hmm. <clears throat> gap opening the dimensions, and so you got a double representation of Shiva and this dimensional dance and dis- destruction. That you know, Very that two red flags, you know, immediately red flag in my mind. Then looking deeper into it, but it, it doesn't surprise me that they show what they're going to do. Or that they actually believe that I, I don't know what they believe, but it, that's what caught my attention, like you said. So what do you take from it? Well, my immediate take was that this is an occult practice. This is demonic influences. This is reaching out to multiple universes and opening up a portal, opening up a gateway. And oftentimes people, when they hear things like that, they think of, you know, UFOs and science fiction and their eyes glaze over and they just turn a deaf ear to it. But this is real. This is tangible. This is not make-believe. As you intimated that the last time that the LHC was operating, that they had opened a dimensional portal and that there were giants, 12-foot giants, etc., um, that appeared and law enforcement was called to the scene. Now, if you look at some of the information on the technical side, why did why they shut the LHC down was for two reasons. One, they had about 1,600 electrical connections, bus bars and things that actually um, burned. They were actually destroyed. When that occurred, what is called a quenching or an immediate shutdown of the supercooled magnets occurred. That necessitates two things. One, the replacement of those burned electrical connectors, and two, the replacement of the magnets. In a supercooled environment, they have to cool the machine down to an ambient atmospheric temperature. That can take several months up to a year just to allow things not necessarily to cool down, but to rise in temperature back to normal operating temperatures before they can replace the magnets themselves. What I'm driving at here is they actually had a dimensional portal open, and it nearly destroyed the machine. Yeah, you know, and now they've mem- du- almost double the voltage. Mm-hmm. Exactly. In 2015, do, do you maybe think they have the safeguards in place? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Anthony. Uh, do you think they oh, have? Do you think they have enough wisdom to have the safeguards in place this time? Or are they just no. hoping for bust it wide open and let hell break loose? <laughs> <laughs> I think there, there's there's quite a bit of deception going on. Um, there's an element of delusion. There's an element of spiritual influence that is deluding the folks that are actually in charge of this project into believing that they do have the power to control a dimensional portal when it opens. When, in fact, I think from an intuitive and also a spiritual level, you and I would agree, and many of the listeners would agree, man does not have the ability to control what they should not be delving into in the first place. Exactly. Just like Oppenheimer saying, I have become death. The destroyer of worlds. Absolutely. Right. And that was the yes. next step that I went to as I'm sure you did in your research. So let's jump over to the Advanced Light Source building at UC Berkeley, because that's where Oppenheimer performed much of his research in nuclear science in the development of the atomic bomb. The Advanced Light Source is a synchrotron. It's a particle accelerator on a smaller scale, as is the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. There are a number of synchrotrons around the world, but I focused on Berkeley because Oppenheimer brought me to Berkeley, and that's my alma mater. I attended UC Berkeley. Um, The advanced light source, in a nutshell, performs the function of looking down to the quantum level of the basic building blocks of the universe, much like the LHC that was ostensibly they're well known for the Higgs boson. the discovery of the Higgs boson particle. Um, the God much particle, of what, they called it. Exactly. And look at the hubris involved in, in naming it the God particle, although it was the media that gave it that name, not necessarily the scientists. Um, what, it, what the synchrotron is being used for at Berkeley is to um, 
look at a number of things that down at the nano scale. That's one billionth of a meter in size. And they're looking into the quantum world and they're looking at the quantum mechanics. Um, what has come out of that as one of the many experiments that are performed on what they call beam lines, where they're accelerating electrons to near the speed of light and causing collisions to take place, they're actually able to look at the proteins of DNA and what is called protein folding. They're able to, in a three-dimensional fashion, recreate in a computer model what a protein looks like, what our DNA looks like, what it's constructed of, and how to, and this is the real point, how can they modify the DNA? So I'll let you jump in there. Yeah. That's, I've read about that from since Sumerian text calls for mm -hmm. DNA manipulation and changes. But, you know, at this, this stage of the game, what would you say the DNA manipulation is mainly set to accomplish? A hybrid transhuman? Uh, what? What do you think? Yes, exactly. Um, there have been a couple of generations of hybrids that have already been achieved, but in a nutshell, yes. There's a third strand of DNA consisting of silicon, the same thing the transistor silicon chips is made of, the third strand of DNA in the laboratory that has been created has been merged with the human double strand, double helix of DNA. And this third strand of DNA is also coated with a nanoparticle thin layer of gold, which increases its surface area. The purpose of doing that is to digitally program or impart digital programming, ones and zeros, onto the third strand of DNA. The purpose of that is the to silicon control the strand. person. It's a it's a is silicon right? strand. Yes. Right. Okay. I hope I'm not speaking too quickly. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just making sure that I was uh, this gold tip silicon strand is lo almost like a superconductor. Then. Exactly. It, it, and so it has that ability to act as a superconductor and also to retain programming, and programming moves into the area of control. And essentially, the control is the agenda for all of this research in the manipulation of DNA, creating hybrids out of humans. And there are other external control mechanisms we can get into, but that's essentially the purpose is to change people. And is it to do with the generating a new slave race? I'm sorry, you broke up. Um, is, is it to do with a slave race? creating yes. the perfect yes. slave race? Yes. Um, in my latest interview, um, you probably picked up on the fact that I was calling it a surf class to go back in the medieval times, if you will. There, Many of your listeners are familiar with the fact that we, we picture the world being controlled by an elite ruling class right now. And essentially, if you look at uh, the Georgia Guidestones and other references, the agenda is to reduce the population to 500 million people. Those 500 million people essentially will be hybrids serving as a serf or slave class to the elite. Yeah. I've read from the uh, Royal British Society some scary information about that, some of their plans on how to do it, and even uh, the philosophy on who will be forced to accept it. Will you be forced to simply to keep your uh, employment to accept some physical enhancements, things like that? It's and it's all to do with maintaining the workforce. The whole PDF from the Royal British Society. It's scary because it's non-human. The uh, tone of the language in it is totally non-human. Uh, subspecies slave control. Yes. And that is purely demonic in origin. Yes, it is. Now, you were talking about, I didn't mean to interrupt, you were talking about the silicon-based gold tip DNA strand. Now, is it going to be like a light activated, or mm -hmm. or it, will it be a triggered mechanism or to where, go ahead and you, you talk about it instead of me guessing. Sure, well... 
only from what I've read. I mean, I'm not on the inside, so to speak, but this is my best connecting of the dots. You have um, resident programming. You have programming that is um, physically imparted upon the layer of gold around the third silicon strand of DNA. But in order to take it beyond just some basic resident programming, which would immediately, upon injection or absorption into the body, would begin to change the second the two strand of DNA because it would adhere itself and it would modify uh, the existing DNA. That would be an almost immediate effect upon the host. But there's outside control mechanisms in the form of extremely low frequency ELF, and that goes off into a tangent in talking about um, satellites and also ARP, um, ground and orbital um, transmission sources for ELF waves to control people. So you have a two-stage process. Um, the way in which, stepping back for a moment, the way in which I envision, and not so much as a prophet, because I certainly am not, but just envision from connecting the scientific papers I've read, if you look at human nature and you say, you must take this chip, you must swallow this tablet with a microchip on it, as has been out in the news just recently. Um, people are going to rail against that. They're going to refuse it. They're going to say no. So how do you make it something that people demand? Well, you put it into a vaccine, a vaccine that will either prevent or cure a disease. Um, if you it look at spread a disease. Exactly. You hit it right on the head. So take your pick of disease. I, I in covert catastrophe, I give one example and focus on the, the MERS coronavirus. It's the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, man-made, right. man-constructed um, virus that will soon be a pandemic. But we have the, you know, swine flu, avian flu, take your pick. You can put this third strand of DNA in any vaccine. People will demand the vaccine, and now they're changed. And there we go. <laughs> Is that the more? I believe it is, yes. Absolutely. The reason I say that is because, you know, in the book of Enoch, it talked about the children of the fallen angels and that they could not, they were not cured. They could not be saved because of the hybrid. And it seems like kind of what we're leading to here is that if, if Satan's bunch can get us to take, <clears throat> excuse me, take this more or this vaccine, then... We've taken the uh, we've become transhuman, not a not a creation of God, and it, it, there's a warning about taking that mark that uh, you, you're not going to make it, and it would that would be perfect, perfectly in line with what Satan would want to accomplish, destroy the children of God and the world, knowing it's but a short time, and he he can place it into the hands of the elite, like the Royal British Society, the technology to do it and just entice them through greed into creating a slave race. And some of that bunch not even realize they're creating a transhuman that cannot, that may not possibly be a child of God. It cannot be saved because of that change. Does mm -hmm. it go that deep? Yes, I believe it does. I believe the, um, there, there's a philosophical, or if you want to, a, a religious or spiritual debate. Um, some people will say that we must be consciously making the decision to take the mark. In other words, having that ability to make that choice. Um, and if we exercise the choice to take the mark, then we are lost. Others will say that it will happen through an involuntary, unknowing process, much like I just described with the hidden third strand within the vaccine. Um, Correct. I think part of what my mission is here is awareness. I think that if we raise the red flag and say, this is what could be happening. I'm not dogmatic about it, but this could be what's coming, and you should ask questions. You should examine vaccines, for example. You should know the source and know the content of what you're putting into your body, whether it's GMO foods, or vaccines. 
going back to your question, I believe that the genetic manipulation, however that takes place, creating hybrids, or the acceptance of electronic devices and mechanisms for the purpose of creating a transhuman, which is a little bit different, it's more of an external transformation, I believe can result in the loss of independent thought and therefore independent choice and in selection. The hive that's, mentality. That's exactly it, the hive mentality. Does that necessarily mean a loss of your soul? That's not for me to answer. I don't know. But if that hive is controlled by the queen, depending yes, on who the queen is, then in thought control and con the manipulation involved, you won't even see it coming. You know, there's <clears throat> you're going to be under command. And that uh, mentality is talked about even in the papers I was talking about from the Royal British Society on the future of workforce, is this high mentality. And they're even talking about introducing, either through DNA or through pharmaceutical, that uh, a pleasure to where if you, uh, whether it's um, in uh, brain release, a pleasure from there, or or a whatever it is, neurological, to where once you accomplish work task, you get this high or you get this pleasure. And so, it, you, in other words, they've developed a slave race that works just for that, just for that high, like a heroin addict. And that yes. they're going to introduce that as part of this workforce. And, that, and, you know, you talk about this gold tip, silicon-based DNA. What it, on the tip, I'm not sure if they got it technically correct. What is it, melanase? Is that what they call the tips that wear out on your DNA mm -hmm. that yes. reproduces the cells? And so this gold yes. tip not only could provide a superconductor, but also extend the life of an individual by protecting that melanase, the tip. Exactly. exactly. And prolong the workforce and the life expectancy of the workforce. And therein, if we go back to the philosophical question of whether or not someone has free will and the ability to willingly make the decision to know what it is they're accepting into their body, if they're willing to openly, willingly take the mark of the beast, knowing what it is, knowing what it is to do. I think that part of the deception that will be presented is not only, say, a pandemic epidemic disease that they want some sort of protection from through a vaccine. But also, if we go to transhumanism, if we go to the proponents of transhumanism, they are buying into the original lie put forth by Satan in the Garden of Eden, which was the promise of immortality. Through technology, yes. through the gold, through the DNA, if they can extend a life and say, you will achieve immortality if you take this, let's call it the mark of the beast for our language, whatever language they choose or label they want to put on it, <clears throat> you'll achieve immortality. That's the great lie. That's the great deception. That's why you and I are raising the red flag and why we're giving out this warning to create that awareness so that people say, no, I know what the game is. I refuse it. I don't want immortality. Because in accepting the lie of immortality or the promise, what ends up happening is an immediate transformation of your brain, your thought processes, your awareness, and you're you're gone. You're lost. Downgraded. Yep. Yeah. Now, I think you're so close that it's scary. And uh, all the pieces are falling together, Anthony, so fast now. And people are coming together with just enough information, you know, just a tidbit to add to the conversation to where it becomes more coherent in, in, in yeah. its meaning. Now, I, you you talked about this blue bean. I think I've heard you talk about that. Yes, sir. Will that be part of this acceptance of this DNA change or this transhumanism change? Is, will that be part mm -hmm. of getting people to, to do it? What do you Tell us about it that. Will, I, I don't know it will be. 
it will be part and parcel to multiple directions of bringing the mark of the beast to us. Um, it will be a visual and audible grand deception. Project Bluebeam, a lot of folks have known about for 20, 25, 30 years. Essentially what the manifestation of that Project Bluebeam is going to look like this time goes right to movies like Independence Day. This is all pre-programming that is being done of the population, and your listeners know this. But to answer your question specifically regarding the mark of the beast and the acceptance of it, it will be a presentation of our ancestors from the stars. And you can look at a number of leading scientists, a number of leading technologists who openly have published papers and interviews saying that we are descendants from, if you will, aliens or our forebearers from the stars and that they are coming back to solve all of the world's problems. If you leap over to a tangent for a moment, there is a movement for full disclosure, the disclosure movement, if you will, getting governments, U.S. government included, to come clean and say, yes, we know all about UFOs and aliens and that there are they are, in fact, our benevolent ancestors. And Project Bluebeam specifically is for the purpose of creating a holographic image in major locations around the world simultaneously, presenting, for example, in a Christian uh, society, Christian predominant society, you'd have a projection of Jesus coming back. In other areas, it would be, you know, their their God coming back, or their Savior coming back, in their right. language, in their culture. And so there are multiple locations around the world in which this Project Bluebeam will be presented. It's presented both from ground-based as well as satellite-based imaging sources. And you can Google this stuff. You can find it wide open. It's there. This isn't make-believe. This isn't science fiction anymore. The purpose is to deceive the population into believing that benevolent ancestors have come back to help us to solve all of the world's problems. If only you will ascend to a higher form of evolution by taking this change, this third strand of DNA. And I'll stop there. Got you. I understand what you're saying. Uh, just like it, it, the Alpha and the Omega, as Satan did in the Garden, I can give you eternity. Just go against God's will. <clears throat> to, and, uh, so then, so we're seeing that happen again right here before our eyes. Now, not to mention any names, but you've seen those barges, some of these yes. high-tech barges yes. up close in different parts of the world, I think. We've got, we've yes, San sir. Francisco, maybe even places like that. Is this going to be like relay stations for this Project Blue Beam or communication gathering or maybe all of the above? <laughs> I'm sure it will be multi-purpose because these barges will have what's called an adiabatic quantum computer installed in it. Um, this, right. is a, this is a, another topic we can go into in a few moments. But to be specific, yes, the barges are in place as command and control centers Initially, the first purpose will be for the projection of holograms, much like the Project Bluebeam, to deceive the population to go through the process of accepting the supposed ancestors. These ancestors, by the way, are the hybrids that are being created. They will be tangible, not holographic bodies. They will be live beings that look just like us and act like us, but they're hybrids. I'll let you jump in. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Uh, and listen, it, I don't doubt a bit of it. I don't doubt it because it plays in line with everything that we're seeing. Um, and I, I did a video series, Anthony, a while back. I don't know if you saw it. It talks about the 1,200-year calling of civilization. <clears throat> it starts back into some of the ancient Anunnaki Sumerian texts to where the noise grew great among the... Mm -hmm the people. In other words, they were revolting. They were and th this according to this these tablets and this information, they had been DNA manipulated into a slave race. We we've heard them talk about uh, for the gold mines in yes. Africa. 
things yes. like that going leading up to the all the way to monotonic gold. Now, but this this culling, <clears throat> or it, it's different this time in all the history of civilization when we've seen it. But whether it was wars to wipe out the young and energetic generations uh, so that they couldn't revolt or whatever it was, this is different. It's the first time in history. It's not just there's going to be a culling of the people that possibly either won't go along with this or not emotionally or physically or neurologically capable of taking the implant. And it, what's so scary about it is our, with these new roadblocks and they're doing this DNA swabbing. Yes. Are they looking for candidates? I mean, are they are they looking for a bloodline that's lost? They're looking for they bloodline. They, they're looking for a bloodline. Yes, is it that absolutely. They're looking for a bad reason like Herod would or for a reason to join their ranks? To join their ranks. They're looking for people that they believe that they can bring into and preserve the, the ancient bloodline coming back from the days of the Anunnaki. Absolutely. So they they know that most of the population is not part of the bloodline, so they're looking for the bloodline. This goes back to the whole genome project, which, by the way, was accomplished in a laboratory 10 miles from UC Berkeley in the city of Walnut Creek is where the human genome mapping took place, and this is in my book. The purpose of that was exactly what you're leading into, and that's identification of the bloodline. Now we're moving into the human brain mapping, which was announced last year by our president, and that is also part of the bloodline. So I'll let you pick up from there. Well, yes, this, the blood, does it go back, are you familiar with the, the descendants of Cain are called Kenites in the Bible, oh, yeah. K-E-N. Mm -hmm. Are they looking Absolutely. for that? Are they lo yes. That's what I was afraid of. And, you know, as soon as that I heard them talk about this DNA swabbing, it had to be one or the other. And this Kenite, these Kenites, they, <clears throat> I'm studying the Old Testament where they replaced the Levitical priesthood as they came out of Babylon, out of um when they were in captivity. They were taking notes of the people, the tribe, as it came back out of captivity. And as they went in, the Kenites were based, they were church workers. They cut firewood, swept, things like that. They had worked themselves in very slowly. But by the time Nebuchadnezzar had been in charge and manipulating the, <clears throat> the Israelites there, he had allowed the priesthood to become Kenite. They were in place. Right. He knew, Satan knew to have them back, let them go, let them go back to Israel and cry, crucify him, crucify him. So, is it, what's scary is this, looking for this bloodline, that in with this locust army, what do you see mm -hmm. there? I mean, I think, we're, we're I think talking about transhuman hybrids. Uh, yes. I think they're looking for suitable candidates to be transformed into hybrids. But I think it's the last stage. I don't believe it's an early or a mid-stage. Things are so far along in the scientific world, in the genetic world specifically, that they really don't need to do much more um, in terms of research and development. So they're picking up the stragglers, basically, is what they're doing. They're looking for the last remnants that, of their family, so to speak along the road. And that's how close we are to the end point. And they're not hiding it anymore. And by putting up roadblocks like this with private organizations that are backed up by local law enforcement officers that are essentially off duty supposedly. That's the in intimidation our that's wide open. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. So that's an indication that we're about to see the final agenda break forth. And it is the preservation of the bloodline. This is the the mentality of the royals and whoever else you want to delve into. They don't want to lose any of their offspring. So they're doing the last final gleaning of their offspring from the population because they know that they don't have much time left. That and they would know who would be more likely to go against their wishes. You know, I can almost en en envision a uh, a license check with your DNA coding in it at the FEMA camp you won't bust 
A or you they're yeah, gonna put you on bus A or bus B. That's Depending right. on that DNA squad, you know. When this guy's gonna be trouble, he's a he's a son of God. Get him out of here. And it does not take you know, an extensive amount of time to run a DNA scan on someone now that the human genome has been mapped. I know what so, did, did they trace it back to seven female individuals. I think the, yes. the entire population, known population of the earth. That's right. That's amazing. <clears throat> it, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's scary. It's enlightening. It's eye opening. It's a lot to absorb, but it's exactly what I had that I was afraid of. What you're talking about. What do and, you see yeah. as a glimmer? What do you see as a glimmer of hope for the folks that are listening to our conversation today? That if, well, Christ said if I if I had not shortened the end time, even the elect would be in trouble. And um, that's, you know, you, you want to be on that elect side. It's, Anthony, you, you throw so much on the table. It, it's hard to flabbergast me now, but you've done it. Uh, in, in the sense that it's piling up in my mind and, and uh, with what I've been thinking, you know, it's almost, make, almost will make you speechless. But, mm-hmm. God, I think that the only thing we can do is continue to research and continue to dig as hard as we can, kind of study to show yourself approved, and look for God, in other words. Look for his I agree. I agree. I agree. This I mean, is a search for God. It isn't. It isn't so much you know going through all the science and looking at it and going, oh wow, look how much I know. It's a matter of self awareness and awareness that you can pass on to others, so that they become aware. I don't like to use the term awaken or you know all of those derogatory things, but I like to think that maybe I can help people become more aware prompt them to do their own research. That was the real purpose behind writing Covert Catastrophe, was to give just superficial references to different areas of science, like DNA and computers and whatever else, so that then if people were interested, if they were curious, they would dig deeper on their own into these areas of science. But the purpose of doing the digging is so that you really understand the nefarious, the dark occult influence that's going on in the world so that you do turn to Jesus, so you do turn to God and say, forgive me for my sins. I turn myself over to you. I want you to become a part of me. I want to be saved. I don't want to be part of the dark. I want to go to the light. However you want to term it and phrase it, but have a close personal relationship with God. That's the whole reason that you and I are talking today, is to encourage people to turn to Christ. That's it. It's it's going to be like the Daniel in the lion's den thing. That uh, there was no way out, no way, you know. But God had a way because of the ultimate faith and belief, and he was he was one of God's elect. He he knew in his heart, and so no illusion that uh, Nebuchadnezzar or Satan could throw on him could overcome that strength that protective strength that God had given him. It's the and like you said, when you become aware of how evil this plot is thing in your mind to where you say, There's only one way. I can make it through this. And that's why God said he said it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings it is to search them out. Now there you go. It, and it's like that now. It's who are the kings? Who are everyone is kings? If if you want it, if you want to search it out and find the truth, you can do it, and and always share it, and don't let anybody try to block you from it. Because if if you're trying to share something, and you're getting attacked, and you stop doing it, then the Satan wins. And so he laughs. I, I trolled him down. I, we talked about him. We did this. We did that. And he's just giving up, throwing his hands in, and they're laughing, having a party. And you can't do that. And it, but it's like the uh, in Revelation when the, the book was sweet to the taste, but bitter to the belly. You yes. think, wow, this is exciting. That I'm really enjoying learning this information. 
information in that is I've delved into the Old Testament and some of the old texts and things like that. It is bitter to the belly once you digest what's going on. It is bitter, and so once you get through that bitterness in your belly, once you, the realization comes over, you get to turn to Christ. Yes. Yes. You got to. There's no other way. I mean, this the world is so evil now. It's amazing we know what we do know, but that's through the grace of God that He is giving us these enough information to be aware. And like yeah. you said, they have had this technology in place, this DNA, for years and years and years. They just hidden the fact they're saying it's illegal to do, you know, um, <clears throat> anything like this, any is cloning and things like that. And they've been doing it relentlessly. Yes. And it, what's so scary is you, and I've never, I mean, you never know about all the things you hear about, but uh, when you talk about dulcet base and underground bases and DNA manipulation and all, we, yep. you know, how, what do you, how does that tie into, or they're saying it's possibly an alien manipulation that's allowed by, back when Truman made a deal with the uh, aliens or whoever the benevolent or non-benevolent beings were, have you heard anything about these this Dulce base and things like that, Anthony? Um, the deep underground military bases, but Dulce in particular and the battles that have occurred and some of the guys like Mr. Cooper who have lost their lives over the revelations of Dulce that they've presented to the public. So I am very aware of it. Um, well, some of your listeners may not... I'm sorry, what? I was just saying, was that is that part of this DNA experimentation, or is it a totally separate thing? No, that is part and parcel to it. Um, this is where one, if not many more, laboratories are located for the purpose of creating multi-generations of hybrid humans. The experimentation has been going on with abductees all the way to the generation from raw DNA of a life form in a petri dish, if you will, or in a test tube. It's more sophisticated, of course. But yes, this is where the hybrid populations currently are being produced. And they are for a specific purpose or set of purposes beyond just what the 500 million population that will be left here, left behind, so to speak, in the end. Um, they are more specific in their programming. So you have multiple functions of hybrids, including humans, that are changed. But yes, Dulce is where the predominantly most of that research and that storage of hybrids, which will be then activated and brought forth. Well, I, you know, I think there's a key in Revelation to about one, it may be this group, this special group you're talking about. It, says mm -hmm. the, it mentions the locust army. They have these breastplates. And back in the Old Testament, the breastplates were they were signs of priesthood. Yes. And that that leads into is this going to be a false priesthood that appears uh, yes. very holy? It, you know, this special group because this bre the breastplate always signified priest priesthood, and they're, they're giving that to the locust army. But it's a breastplate of metal instead of a gems. Yes, and that's where it gets a little murky because we don't know what the programming is exactly. We don't know what the intended functions are going to be, and that will come out you know, during the time of the Great Tribulation. Essentially, what if you go all the way to the end point where this Satan is trying to kill God and create his own version of heaven on earth, and that's why we go back to the opening of the portal and the um, multi-dimensional creatures, basically demonic entities, spiritual entities that are coming through um, to form that army. And that's what these hybrids will also be a part of, will be that army of Satan. Right, and so many people will be looking for an army and not, an or uh, not a group of priests pretending to be holy. Right. Be part of the, there's a mass evangelism going on here. You know, these super intelligent creatures, they can perform miracles, cast out devils, um, just like Jesus. we got to get in and jump on this boat. Let's take this yeah. DNA change. 
let's take this mm-hmm. uh, get like let's be like them they they're doing good they're they're wealthy they uh have everything I want to be like that I want to be and, uh, eternal yes, and those are all lies, and once you accept yeah. the mark of the beast, you have no freedom of choice, you have no independent thought. Yeah, but you yeah, won't even be aware high, of the high mentality. Yeah. And by creating the high men- mentality with one controller, they control a large area. And that controller yeah. could be a satellite. It could be uh, a beam, advanced light technology. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of possibilities there. <laughs> Can we go back for a moment to one of the tangents yes, I mentioned? Please. And that's, that's the adiabatic quantum computer. Now, that's a mouthful, but it's a quantum computer that, and I'm not going to name the manufacturer. You, listeners can Google that for themselves. Okay. But these, these computers do not use silicon-based transistors. They use what are known as qubits. And these have been manufactured now since about well, openly manufactured since about 2003. In this year, 2014, the, com- the manufacturer openly on their website indicates that the adiabatic quantum computer will achieve artificial intelligence, sentient intelligence, this year, mid-2014. In 2015, it will advance to what they call a universal level computer, a computer that has the equivalent processing power of all of the human brains in the world combined. So we are now looking at the control mechanism, the tool that will be enabling the elite, the controllers, to control the hive. The adiabatic quantum computer is the mechanism to do that. It actually reaches out through their programming um, they reach out into another dimension, and this is all in the literature. They put forth a problem into that other dimension, then extract the solution, and it has the ability to do this so quickly that even the Tiani 2 in China, the world's fastest silicon-based transistor gate model-based computer in the world, That computer, for example, if it took 30 minutes to run a problem and derive a solution, the adiabatic quantum computer can extract it from another dimension and solve the same problem in less than a half a second. This, can you explain this interdimensional uh, transfer? Uh, You know, I I know that sounds primitive. The question is, is primitive, but... How are they going to accomplish that? In other words, how can they reach over into a dimension? Will it be the computer tied into, like, the CERN unit, the collider? Or will it be just manifested without that? Will the the computing power alone do it? Um, It isn't tied into the LHC and CERN, although... It will be used in data analysis, the data stream analysis that comes out like a waterfall out of the uh, detectors at the LHC. Eventually, if not already, but eventually, very quickly, it will be used for data processing and analysis. But specifically, it is not currently tied to the LHC. It doesn't need to be. It's a standalone computer that's housed in a room that is 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters. It's isolated from all electromagnetic interference, and it is brought down to near absolute zero using super-cooled magnets, super-conducting magnets. And when you go down to absolute zero, you are now operating in a quantum spatial environment. It is in the quantum spatial environment in which that other universe takes place. It's probably not easy for people to digest what is, what we're really talking about when we talk about another universe or another dimension. 
it's really a form of measurement that we're trying to place human measurement on what a, another dimension is. It really has more to do with the energy levels and whether you're looking at a form of energy or a form of matter when you're down at the quantum level. The level of the qubits is operating in a zero point environment, a singularity of no energy because of the temperature being nearly absolute zero. So now what you're faced with is matter rather than energy. And so you are manipulating matter through the manipulation of heat, which is a form of energy. Adiabatic, in the name of adiabatic quantum computer, without energy. If you look at the word diabetes or diabetic, that is the processing of food, sugars, into energy. That's essentially what's taking place here. And they are raising the temperature infinitesimally from zero to another state, altering the state of the matter of the qubits, which in our parlance, in our frame of reference, is another dimension. It gets into quantum mechanics and quantum mathematics. It's a little bit difficult to describe. But in a nutshell, we're looking at things that are so small that they go beyond the Higgs boson level. They go into dark energy and dark matter. Those are their own words, dark energy and dark matter right. in what's called a Higgs field. This is a field that is open. If you want to look specifically at opening a portal, you're opening the Higgs field. You're spreading a mesh. You're inserting through the mesh this problem that you're trying to solve, and they use what they call a, a black box programmer. They open the Higgs field by manipulating energy or heat, sending through their problem in their own specific form of quaternary or quantum programming, and then pulling the answer back. So I better stop there and let you jump in. Did I lose you? Did I lose you? Hey, guys, I think I got the line back up. It did it. Uh, again, right in 90 minutes into our show, we lost all our lines. I'm going to try to get our caller back on the line. This is really interesting. Anthony, if I lost you, if you can call back in, we still got uh, about 25 minutes. I'd love to get your information, and I want to uh, get everyone to link you to tell us about your YouTube channel, things like that. If I can't get you back on, I will put up some links on the next video. But uh, I apologize if uh, I lost you. This has happened to us uh, the entire week and last week also. But, uh, Anthony, if you're there, I'm watching for your call. Let's see here if I can grab you. Yes, Anthony. Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry yes. about that, Anthony. There, each day at 90 minutes into the show, it's done this. Maybe I should go to an hour and a half show. You think they're giving me a hint? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have a popular not, I show. apologize to you. I apologize yeah. to you for that. It's I can't help it. I had to call okay. back in. It completely cut me down. But look, we 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 were Ryan. You were telling us about this uh, the computer, and I believe it was the qubits you were talking about. The yes, the a diabetic quantum computer. We were talking about the qubits and reaching into another dimension and reaching through the Higgs field, which is associated with the Higgs boson particle, the God particle. And right. they're manip manipulating the heat within the computer in order to open up the Higgs field and insert a problem and then retrieve the answer. And that's the best way I can relate an interdimensional computational computer, if you will. So go ahead from there. Well, listen, Einstein talked about <clears throat> uh, matter and energy, um, and uh, I think it had something to do with, with MC square. But he said that you can that all matter is that you cannot produce matter until you slow the frequency down of the energy. 
it was somewhere along that line. In other words, all matter is existing at high frequency. Unless you can slow that down to where you, this, the matter actually comes about. Are you seeing what I'm saying there? Is it, is it got mm -hmm. to do with that, like the energy, yes. the frequency of energy, and slowing that frequency down to get it through this portal? Or yes, maybe that's. If, I see. if you will, there's almost there's almost a soft approach and a hard approach. If you look at the LHC colliding at the speed of light, different particles, um, you are generating massive amounts of energy as well as data. And that's the hard approach. The soft approach is more of an alchemist approach. If you go back to ancient studies, if you go back to the hermetic studies, the emerald tablet in Hermes, where alchemy, what people typically refer to as turning lead into gold, these are modern day alchemists at the LHC and also when we're talking about the adiabatic quantum computer which is the soft approach. They're using absolute zero and then manipulating the levels of absolute zero temperature and opening a very small portal, purely for computational reasons. The LHC is using a large hammer to open a macro portal. And that's gotcha. the best way to relate the two. We, we, we talked about this the other day with <clears throat> the angel that's cast down with the key to the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. Now, would, is it? You think that could be possibly be some like an angel or fallen angel that uh, has the knowledge or that last formula that they're searching for in their in their calculations, or maybe even this soft approach to that key to finally open that pit. It looks like they're sitting here opening it, and God has an appointed time to say to let that angel fall and have the key to the pit. Is that anywhere in line with this? Yes, I, I believe that it is. And I listened to your broadcast on Friday in which you were discussing that. Um, oftentimes people will vi visualize a physical bottomless pit in the earth itself going down into you know the hollow earth right. discussion and all of those kinds of things. I, it's purely, rather than thinking of it in terms of terrestrial, we need to think of it in terms of dimensional, you know, universal dimensions. And so we are using energy to open up a space in the universe. And that, if you look at, at fractal designs, for example, if you look at a fractal design, you can go all the way down to the quantum level and see the same pattern repeated. You can go up to the macro level into the complete universe and see the same fractal pattern reproduced mathematically. This is the same thing that's happening in terms of the LHC. They're, they're using energy at a high level to try to blast open into the fabric of the universe. Again, the Higgs field. Right. So the reason for opening a large macro portal is for the allowing of the transferring of massive quantities of energy, which we would call in our belief system demonic entities or spiritual beings, fallen angels. Some people want to call them, you know, the, you know, the Anunnaki coming back. Those are the New Age definitions. However, right. it's allowing energy to enter into our area through the Higgs field. And... If we look at the macro or the, the, the microscopic level, the quantum level, it's purely for running mathematical computations that then transfer to the macro machine. So here is where the tie that you referred to earlier comes in between the LHC and the adiabatic quantum computer. They are tied through what is called a quantum internet. The latest version of the quantum internet is called the ESnet 5. That's essentially the ESnet 5 is connecting all of the laboratories, uh, significant laboratories and universities and private sector research laboratories together. They are processing the data that comes from the LHC detectors, the CMS detector and the ATLAS detector being the two largest. 
the waterfall of data that comes from those detectors is spread out through these universities around the world. Now, interestingly enough, and this comes back to UC Berkeley, the previous generation, ESNet 5, which is a fiber optic system with 100, it's just 100 gigabytes of throughput per second, that is controlled through UC Berkeley. UC Berkeley controls all of the data that comes out of the LHC in terms of controlling the network around the world for the processing and the distribution and processing of that information. The manufacturer, the manufacturer of the adiabatic quantum computer is in Silicon Valley, right next to Berkeley. Berkeley is still the hub of the ESnet 5. Will it remain so? I don't know. But this new quantum internet is where the tie between the computer and the LHC comes in, and they use the computational power of the computer to control, they think, the opening of this macro portal at the LHC. So the soft approach may give them the key they need by reaching into that data field? Yes. And is it, are they searching for this key? Yes. That, that's that the is amazing. That's a diabetic computer. Yep. And and then to control it, I guess once they do this, that that this is amazing technology that they have, and to use it for the evil. But I guess that's just the way it's been since nuclear technology and everything else. Well, let me ask you a question, Anthony. You, they have the CERN in Geneva. Then in Italy, they have another computer system set up there that they said that they, I think, near the speed of light, broadcast underground about 400 miles maybe to that mm -hmm. one. Now they're setting one up in a triangle uh, in Budapest, Hungary. Why not have them all in one location, or is there something to do with this, uh, a net effect, with the worldwide net that will encompass all the way around it? Or, you know, I was just thinking, it seemed... Technically, it would seem so much easier to have all your computers in one place so you don't have the transfer data loss in transmission. Mm -hmm. But why is this spread? Why are we seeing that spread out? I believe it's spread out for mathematical reasons. If you're looking at an equilateral triangle, which is what you're describing, right. um, you have to have a balance of power. And the triangle affords you that universal configuration of balance of power. And I believe that that's what it is. The other reason is the sheer amount of energy that's required. And you have to have the distances to accelerate. And you went into this on Friday, um, but I'll just repeat for your audience too. To accelerate to near light speed these particles, you have to have a certain distance in which the magnets have an opportunity to pulse and then repulse and continue in a multiplication fashion, continue to accelerate in circles or in a triangle. In the case of CERN, you know, we've got the three loops. Go ahead, sir. Got you without the dampening factor. Right. Yeah, and right. Th it, that's kind of like when it got out of control on them, it just started this oscillation and increasing of energy until their circuits couldn't take it. If their circuits could have taken it, we may have already seen some, a lot more than we have. And it's kind of yeah. like the mad scientists are rushing to get this ready, you know. And, and it's amazing. Yep. The, there's, I was reading an article where there's different schools in Europe, colleges and high schools, where the college, they're, they're encouraging the college kids to write to their senators and, and political leaders to join CERN billions and billions of dollars into one project. Yeah. You know, it's been, what, 160 nations or something like that's involved in this thing now? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> and and it, they're bringing in the, very few people know about to, it. Yeah, they're trying to recruit the next generation. And the problem is, is we don't have, because of the failure of our school systems, not just in this country but around the world, the dumbing down of the populations, they have very few to draw from in terms of, you know, the um, the depth of your bench in a baseball analogy. Right. Um, and this is why I think they are also trying to rush this project is that they realize that 
one, they've achieved pretty much what they need to achieve, but they don't have another generation of scientists to fall back on. And looking so for this, got this uh, new, t right? That's it's, and uh, it's an encouragement factor to, uh, in in other words, it's kind of like uh, prepping. In other words, this is a good project. Let's get behind it, so mm -hmm. that when the project is over and comes to fr fruitation, there, then it's already accepted. Right. In other words, it's accepted academically, financially around the world. Young people are getting behind it, so it's got to be good. And so the result, you d you need to become transhuman. You need to take this DNA change. Uh, to that's it's mind-boggling. <laughs> It, it is, is but totally mine. We, we need to keep interjecting a, a, the hope to our audience because we may have some people that have just joined us, and it's absolutely imperative that people realize that we bring this information forth so that people can be encouraged to turn to God, who is ultimately in control and is in control of this LHC and the Asiatic computers and everything else, and He's allowing these things to take place. Do we have the answers to why he's allowing these things to happen? Not necessarily. We're not given that much insight by our Lord. But he wants us to trust him and to turn to him. Because as you said earlier, there's only two choices in life. Go to the light, go to the dark. That's the practical reality of life. That's it. That is it. It, it is amazing that uh, all of this is being brought to light at this time. And I had a caller the other day. He talked about these sonic booms during this tr this dimensional change, and we've t we've heard about these sounds around the world. You know, people hearing these strange sounds, and we never know when the collider is actually turned on. We know about it when they tell us, or yeah. when they're you know going to turn it back on or not. But this <clears throat> is like a sonic boom of a jet reaching Mach, and. Uh, creating the same type of boom coming from one dimension to the other. And it mm -hmm. I can't help, Anthony, but think about the thunders that John was told not to write about. I don't know why I may be real far off base there. But if you imagine the, uh, you all of a sudden these explosions and uh, these <clears throat> dimensional porty, portals exploding open and this rush in, you know, it's just a picture in my mind of what those thunders could be when you're talking about these noises. What do you? What's your take on that? I mean, have you thought about it? Sure. Um, there, I think, are terrestrial sources for this, and the other is the portal. I think that the latter, the portal opening, will result in these thunders and in these uh, incredible noises that are going to occur that are described in in scripture, and that's you know, during the Great Tribulation. However, what I think we're experiencing in the last couple of years is actually the expansion of the Earth's crust, the tectonic plate separation that's occurring because we have more energy being absorbed by the, man by the core, and it's expanding the mantle and the crust. And so you're seeing a balloon being stretched and the sounds coming from that stretching that's occurring. And that's just my opinion. I, I, that's you know, right, right. I'm, I don't yeah, know I, I've heard of, uh, you know, some of them could be, like you said, a tectonic plate opening and a massive release of air rushing out, things like that. But then, mm -hmm. so it may just, this, we haven't heard those thunders yet because they're going to be so terrible or so astounding that men's heart will fail. Now, we're hearing these sounds, and of course, people's mind relate and try to tie in that thing, but. The, this portal opening, when it busts through, or for whatever it's whatever we see, whether it's Project Blue Beam, uh, or real entities, or whatever it is, that thunder is going to be <clears throat> a signal. I think it, it seems like it's right before the seventh trump. You know, right. Yes. It's the last thing, last bad thing that happens. Or, but I, Anthony, it's just amazing, and and. We've we've got a few minutes left on the show, and if you would, could you tell us about how to get your book? Tell us about your YouTube channel and ways that we could go in. 
when you're not on the show, which I want you to start calling me. If you can, uh, just let me know a day or two ahead of time, and I'll, and I'll get you on the show anytime you have an update. But if you could give us just a few minutes of uh, of your uh, how to how to watch your stuff and how to get your book and keep up with your updates, please. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, my website is anthonypatch.com, and it's patches peas and Paul. So it's anthonypatch.com. From there, you can link over to Amazon. You can download the book into Kindle or PC or Mac. Uh, or you can also order a print version of the book through Amazon. I have a YouTube channel that is Anthony Patch Author. That's my, the name of my channel. I have two channels, but that's the one that has my uh, latest interview videos. And I only have a few on there. I don't have a lot on YouTube. I've chosen not to. But Anthony Patch Ooh. Author is my channel name. Let me ask you this. On my website, mm -hmm. BP Earthwatch, where I put my links, I will uh, sometimes put uh, people's uh, YouTube videos there. Would you mind me putting a couple of yours there and so people can uh, – I get a 1,000 a day or so that go to the website. <laughs> uh, folks that will go honored. there. Well, I'd, I'd then, be then they can go any quick. Well, listen, because my wife and I last night, uh, once we knew you were going to be on, we spent some time and watched them. And uh, – I, I was I love that deep information, you know, it's just uh, after being burnt out on mainstream years ago to get some deeper knowledge of what's already on my mind. I really enjoyed them. But I'm going to put a couple up on my website, guys. If you have any trouble finding these YouTube channels or things, I'm going to link all that up uh, after the show and go to bpearthwatch.com to get that. But, uh, Anthony, your, the name of the book, again, is A Covert Catastrophe. Yes, sir. And I, I want now, to commend you on all of Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, is the book, is it, I haven't had time to read it. I would love to, uh, I'll get in touch with you. Know, I want to buy a copy, but I want a signed one. I want it autographed. I don't want it from Amazon. I want you to, I, I'll get you that information there. And then I can read about the book, and next time you call me, I'll have a little more intelligent conversation to share with you on it. But, um uh, the, I, I'm going to link up everything. Great. Yes, I will right. definitely now, on, on the book. Give us just a little about the book. Is it is it a fictional book that stays in the line of of what we're talking about, or is it straight facts? It is an adventure story. It's a thriller. It moves very quickly, so it is a work of fiction. Um, right. I try to keep it as clean and simple, and give just a buffet arrangement of the scientific topics so that you don't get bogged down and the story continues to move right along and entertain as well as inform. That's what we need, you know, because just like you and I will get bogged down and people say, what in the world are they talking about? But if you, and what you're talking about here is a way to continue the storyline and to get the message out through. And yes. without just bogging, I understand what you're saying. Well, listen, Anthony, I have enjoyed it so much. Um, I would love to have you on as often as I can. Um, and, uh, Thank you. Again, I'm going to link up your stuff there. Uh, is there anything you'd like to close with just that's on your mind? Feel free to. I'd like, like to close with just a prayer that the full-body armor of the Holy Spirit protect you in your mission and protect you from the already defeated forces that are out there, that you walk as a watchman on the wall and that you are protected, and that we now as brothers who have joined through this program, that we continue to walk together doing the, uh, the good works of our Lord and being faithful witnesses and behaving in the manner of Christ. And with that, I'd like to say God bless you, God bless our audience and everyone else, and uh, amen. Amen. That's what I say, too. Amen. And, uh, again, like you said, uh, we've got a brotherhood started. We're going to keep it going, and uh, we're watchmen on the wall. A Anthony, and uh, I look Paul forward well. to it. <laughs> That's right. There's, and Pastor that, Paul, Paul, Hey, look, Paul knows he's in there with us. He knows it. We, uh, you know, but it's going to take uh, a consolidation of 
persons from every step of life before it's over with you, from every walk of life, and you, you're going to see that. But, again, I appreciate it very much, and I look forward to the next one. I'm going to email you, and you email me back. Tell me when you can get back on the show, and that will give me time to promote it because I think we left people. Uh, I know I'm left with a lot more questions, <clears throat> you know, because right. we think so much alike down the same lines. and. Uh, and I just can't think of it, but I know by this time tomorrow I'll have a hundred that I want to talk and, to you about. <laughs> okay, and feel free to, to email questions if you have them as well. And I am honored to speak with you. I have enjoyed your work and also Pastor Paul's over the last couple of years as well. So thank you, and uh, with that I'll say good night. Okay, good night, Anthony. God bless you. Uh, everybody check out the uh, my website. I'm going to link up Anthony's stuff there for you. And uh, guys, we're gonna we've got just a few minutes left here in the show. I'm gonna. Got